guys, it's Christine, also known as Ivy Winter. Thank you for joining me for another video. It's not really a Disney video. This is a get to know me video that is uh, inspired by your questions. I wanted to do a video like this, but the general get to know me tag is kind of boring. It's like really basic stuff, like where did you grow up? Uh, what's your favorite color? Like it's just, to me, not that interesting. So instead, I put the call out there for you guys to ask me questions. What did you wanna know? Everything from Disney related stuff to not. And hopefully you can get to know me a little bit more because I do feel like a lot of you guys come here and you watch my videos, but you don't really know too much about me. Um, so I'm gonna get into a bunch of that. Christian Humphrey asked me a couple of different fun questions here. Uh, how large would a single box need to be to ship every Disney related thing? you own across an ocean undamaged. Uh, I, I mean, probably like three sizes of me, I would say, at least. I mean, I have a lot of artwork. I feel like that's awkward and takes a lot of space, but we'll say that. Have you determined what restaurants you'll be dining at at Disneyland Paris, Parley Vue Francais? Um, I do not speak French, no, but I am going to take some time in the next few months to learn a little bit more than the absolute basics, just because I find that when you travel to another country, most people don't expect you to fluently speak their language, but if you try, I think it's like a sense of um, respect there. So I definitely want to pick up a few more words than the absolute basics before I go. And as for eating Disneyland Paris, I figured out a couple of places. I'm definitely gonna eat at Waltz, um, which is in Disneyland Paris specifically. I also was recommended the Ratatouille restaurant. I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head right now, um, but you're supposed to be, feel like you're shrunken down to the size of Remy, um, and I was told that was pretty good as well. Ed Varia asked me a couple of questions. The first was, uh, you know, the history of you and Peter, who's my husband, as uh, I'm sure a lot of us are curious about him, since a good bit of what we heard about him through you is limited to the fact that he seems to dislike or at least be uncomfortable at Disney. Um, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's been in some of my vlogs and I'm sure you guys can tell like it's not really his jam. And I've always talked about how like that is totally fine. Like I don't expect him to love it. I never necessarily expected that I would marry someone who loves it. Us not agreeing on Disney is really not a big deal and I get to go and enjoy it and he loves that I enjoy it. He appreciates that I do this channel, like all of that. I mean, we've been together, geez, oh my God, I think it's seven years now. Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, April will be seven years. We've been married a little over one um, and we met in a bar in the East Village in the city at two in the morning. I know that sounds weird. Most people meet now on like, you know, OkCupid or you know, Tinder or whatever. Actually, a lot of my friends getting married recently have all met through dating apps, but we met in a bar. Um, good old fashioned way to meet. I think there's just other things that we have in common. We both really enjoy horror movies. Um, that was a big thing when we first met that we connected on. It's my favorite genre of film. And we both are very close to our families. That's something that I really appreciate about him. Um, we both love doing outdoorsy things like going hiking and stuff like that. We both love video games like on our lazy weekends, like this weekend actually is. We just sit and play video games and sometimes together, sometimes separately in the same room, but like we both enjoy it and appreciate that each other enjoys it. So that's a big thing as well. And the second question uh, coming from Ed was, uh, what's the closest you've ever come to wanting to strangle Rob? Maybe when he was snoring in the middle of the night when we shared a room at Disney, that's about it. Um, we don't fight. I, I know that sounds really weird. I fought with plenty of my friends before. I fought with Peter, I fought with family members. It happens. Rob and I have known each other for 20 something years and uh, we just don't fight. I don't know. I can't think of a single blowout that we've actually really had. So I think the only time I wanted to strangle him is he is a really bad snorer. So sorry, Rob, I'm calling you out. Um, but I just put earbuds in and I listen to a white noise app and I'm good. Speaking of Rob, Board Millionaire asks, how are you connected to Rob? I actually have a video about this. I can link it up here about our history. But the short version uh, is that we went to elementary school together and our moms were both on the PTA and they were friends and so eventually we came in contact with each other. Um, I believe I was in fifth grade and he was in fourth grade and that's it. I mean, we've been friends ever since. Uh, I can't really think about life before I met Rob. I was pretty young, so 
Um, he's been in my life for, like I said, 20 something years now. So, uh, but that's about it. Uh, elementary school friends. So those are rare. Those are rare to still have in your 30s. So if you have them, cherish them. Fun Disney fan asked a fun one. Um, this is if you're forced on a flight to Orlando and couldn't step onto Disney property, what would you do? You have five nights at Marriott and $2,000 Uber is included, but food and tickets are not. You can go to Tampa, Orlando, Cape Canaveral, and Daytona Beach. Where are you spending your time? Probably not in Tampa because I've been there. I don't think there's much to do there. I probably would spend some time on the beach because I love beaches. Uh, I have family down the Jersey Shore right by the beach, so it's been a big part of my growing up. Um, and then I would probably do more universal stuff, and then I would do the other things I've never done in Orlando, like SeaWorld. Um, and the Space Museum and Legoland, like things that I've never been to that are so close, but I just, I never make time for it because I'm always in the Disney bubble. Kathy Haas, I hope I'm saying that right, says, what is your career and how do they feel about your vlogging? I have been thinking about starting, but I'm concerned about my regular career. Nobody in my job knows. I mean, okay, so I'm a freelancer. Let me go back. I'm a freelancer right now, um, but for about eight years, I was full time. Uh, so I am a social media uh, consultant, strategist, manager. I mean, my, my title has changed over the years, but that is what I work in. Um, and some people knew in my old job and it wasn't really a big deal. If anything, it helped me because I work in social media. So to be like, oh, this person does this on their own. They do YouTube on their own. They must really know it. Um, it's always been very helpful. I think that only benefits you when you're either applying for jobs or just work in general. So don't, don't fear starting because one, they might not ever know. And two, even if they do, I think it only looks good for you to have this sort of passion project. Will Medved says, did you ever have long hair? If so, share a pic or video. P.S. Love your current hairstyle. No, I really need a haircut. That's the problem with short hair. You need a haircut every two months. Um, I did actually have long hair until about the age of 24. So most of my life I had long hair, except when I was really, really little. I will put a picture. Um, the weird thing about my hair was when it was longer, it was curlier. I know that sounds strange, but it was way wavier. Um, Cause I'm half Dominican, so I kind of get that from my dad's side. And everyone said, oh, you're gonna chop your hair and it's gonna be like super curly, poofy. And then I chopped it and now it's straight. It's really weird how that happens. Tara M says, what is your favorite restaurant at Disney World? Where's your favorite place to shop at Disney? And your favorite place to shop outside of Disney? Uh, my favorite restaurant, it changes a lot. I'm a big fan of Kona and Kona Cafe in the Polynesian. Just consistently good food. I'm a big fan of Hollywood Brown Derby. Um, I am always open to trying different things and I usually find new things I love. I like homecoming a lot in Disney Springs. Really delicious fried chicken and mac and cheese and all of that. Um, so probably right now like one of those three. Uh, favorite place to shop is actually Mouse Gear. So I actually like that more than the Emporium. I like the way it's laid out. I feel like I'm not like bumping into as many people in the Emporium. It's kind of like a straight shot and it's very busy. You know, a lot of people are cutting through there to leave Magic Kingdom, you all get funneled out. So I feel like it's always crazy in there. I feel like mouse gears you have to kind of divert to go into. So I never feel like it's that crazy. It's also more circular. So you're not bumping into people. So I like that a lot for like when I want to buy actual Disney souvenirs. Um, two other places I love is Memento Mori, which is the Haunted Mansion store outside of Haunted Mansion, obviously, and the mask shop in Italy. A lot of you guys know I collect those masks. So my favorite like non-Disney shop there is the uh, Venetian mask shop. And then my favorite place to shop outside of Disney, you know, I kind of jump around with things that I buy. Uh, I could just say Amazon and that's kind of true. I buy a lot of stuff from Amazon. I'm a big fan of Sephora. You guys know I like my makeup, I love my lipsticks, so I shop at Sephora quite a bit. And then probably uh, clothing-wise, I really like Madewell. I actually just made a huge purchase for spring from Madewell. I just love their style. Um, so those are probably my favorite non-Disney stores. Matt Trevelli, we're going back to Peter here, says, how do you convince your non-Disney fan spouse to go to Disney World? Kind of a tip and personal question morphed into one. Um, I don't know. He came with me in 2015 because he knew how much I loved it, how important it was to me, that I grew up going, so he was very open to going. 
we realized in that moment it wasn't really for him and that's fine. Um, he liked certain aspects of it, you know, he really liked the restaurants, he loved Epcot, he liked we went parasailing, like he loved all of that stuff, the boardwalk. He was not so into the actual parks, like he didn't love waiting in line for rides, he didn't love the heat. We went in September but it was like crazy hot when we went. He didn't like the crowds. It's more of a theme park issue than a Disney issue. And um, so I totally respected that. I don't try to convince him anymore. I think at this point, it's always an open invitation. If he wants to come with me, he 100% can. But I never want him to feel like he has to, and he doesn't want me to feel like I can't go without him. So I think that's kind of the, the situation that we've come to, which is why I do my solo trips or I just go with Rob and other friends. Um, that's not to say he'll never go again, and he's very open when we have kids to go, because I think we both realize it's gonna be a very different experience. Amanda F says, favorite spot at Walt Disney World? Uh, that is tough, because Disney World's huge. But one of my favorite spots is actually, I love getting a coffee on Main Street, going very early, you know, opening Magic Kingdom getting a Starbucks coffee or maybe a Joffrey's. I'm a bigger fan of Joffrey's. And going back by Cinderella's Fountain, you know, beyond the castle, and there's that pathway that goes down into um, basically Liberty Square area, or you can turn and go back towards the hub. I like sitting in that pathway and people watching with a coffee. I don't know why, that's just like a spot that I really love. Other than that, I think one of my other favorite spots is in Animal Kingdom. Um, and it's just around where you're starting to go into Asia. You know there's like that photo op of Everest in the background. I like that spot a lot too. I think it's really, really beautiful. I think everything around the whole Asia area and the water there is really beautiful. Pete Booth says, would you rather be able to speak every language of the world or would you rather be able to speak two cats? I own a cat. Um, if she was here right now, I would show you, but I think she's chilling upstairs. I'll put a photo somewhere. So like, yeah, kind of, but also I feel like if you actually spoke to cats, you'd realize that their brains are very simplistic. So I don't think that she would have a lot to say. She'd probably just be like, food, 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 pet me, food, go away, pet me, go away. <laughs> like, I feel like that would be it. Um, so I would rather be able to speak every language in the world because I love traveling. And if I could just like have full conversations with other people, oh, that'd be so cool. Janet asks, what is your earliest Disney memory? A few questions here. What do you think made you a Disney fan? If you could get married anywhere in Walt Disney World or Disneyland, where would you have the ceremony? And is your family as into Disney as you are? Loaded questions, gonna try to break this down. I first went to Disney World when I was two years old, uh, 1988 don't remember it, but my parents videotaped the entire thing. We had a VHS tape. My earliest Disney memory is actually at home watching these tapes over and over again, especially the Main Street Electrical Parade, driving my parents insane with the song. Um, and that was where my love of it really kind of came from because I didn't remember the trip, but I, I obsessively watched the tape and I wanted to go back so badly. Um, and then my parents took me back again when I was 10. So yes, my family are Disney people. Um, my mom is unfortunately not around anymore. She passed away several years ago, um, but I imagine if she was still around, she'd probably be going with me 100%. Um, my brother loves it. He's just with his job. It's hard for him to get a lot of vacation time off. He did come with me back in 2015, which was the first time we were together for like 15 years. It was crazy. Um, we went together, not we're together. It sounds like I never seen my brother. <laughs> he lives 10 blocks from me, I see him all the time. Um, my dad and I haven't been together in a long time, but he also loves it. We've been talking about going together because he knows that I go a lot, obviously. So yes, my family is super into Disney. I don't think they're as crazy about it as I am, but like they're pretty into it. And then the question of, um, you know, where would I get married in Disney World? I mean, obviously I already am married, um, but Polynesian, I think. I think that'd be a cool, cool place to do it. You guys know I love that resort, so. Basia Meta says, how's your puzzle coming along? Oh, you mean the like thousand piece puzzle I bought my last trip? It's not coming along well at all. <laughs> we got kind of, I not even halfway, like a little less than halfway. And like, I just, all the purples, my brain was about to explode. So it has literally been sitting on my dining table for about three weeks without being touched. John Lee says, I would like to know your favorite non-Disney vacation you have taken, uh, Morocco. I've been to a lot of places. Um, I keep adding to that because I love traveling to different countries. I would say Morocco or Cambodia, both full of very nice people. 
uh, Cambodia. The temples are absolutely amazing. You just can't believe that people actually built these things, especially so long ago. They're just incredible. Um, and then in Morocco, I that place just has a, a it just has a place in my heart. I've been wanting to go to Morocco since I was 16, and I finally went, um, I want to say three years ago, maybe four years ago now. Um, and it's just incredible. It's absolutely beautiful. The people are wonderful. The food is amazing. Um, it's, it's an experience I've never had before, so probably there. PTB Cred asks, New York born and bred, where else might you consider living? And if you're a city person, did you ever learn to drive a car? That's a really good question because a lot of people don't realize that us city people, some of us have licenses and some of us don't. I was one of the people who never got a license. Never. I have friends who did in high school. Um, I was a little afraid of learning when I was younger in Queens and in the city. Like that freaked me out. I also didn't need it. I hopped the bus. I hopped the subway. It just wasn't a necessity. So yeah, I still don't have a license. Um, I am New York born and bred. I've lived in Queens. Most of my life, I lived in Manhattan for a couple of years and came back to Queens. So, like I said, we're moving, we're looking for houses. Um, we're not quite sure yet where. Jersey is a big uh, front runner right now um, because of the commute into the city. To that question, where else would I live? I mean, because of work and because of family, we're kind of staying in the area, but I think I would actually live in like Savannah, Georgia. I really like Savannah a lot, or like just outside of it, or Austin. Austin's a really, really awesome city. Um, so if I was gonna pick a totally different place, it'd be that. Um, and then, yeah, I gotta get a license once I move because I don't know what I'm gonna do out in the suburbs without driving, so that's gonna be fun. DVDA says, what is your favorite horror film? Oh God, that's so hard. It's so hard because I love so many horror movies. I love campy 80s movies. I love the really, tough to watch movies uh, that I don't always recommend to everybody. Um, I love the big blockbusters. I love the weird indie ones. Um, I'd probably say right now, I loved Get Out. I thought that was fantastic. I'm so excited to see us. I think Jordan Peele has suddenly come out of nowhere being this like horror master. Um, other than that, I love the original Friday the 13th. Uh, I love The Mist which is that Stephen King, uh, you know, remake movie that came out several years ago. It's one of my favorites, has a gut-wrenching ending. Um, gosh, I don't even know. I just watched one recently called The Void, which was actually made in 2016, but it feels like an old John Carpenter film. I super recommend it if you want practical effects and just all in, around insanity. Um, and I thought Hereditary was also really, really good and also gut-wrenching. So. There's just a few. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on. Uh, I always said like, if I was gonna do something else aside from Disney, it would be horror movie stuff because I love that stuff. The West Eater says Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle. I never played a single Pokemon game, not even gonna lie to you. Not the card game, not the video game. I was not that kid growing up. But if I had to pick, Charmander because he's like a dragon. It's cool. Anyway, thank you for all the questions. That was so many questions. I hope I can edit this down and not be too crazy. If you have any other questions for me, anything at all, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, then like it. If you like me, you should subscribe. I make videos every single week. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.